If you're currently doing everything in your business, you're not actually running a business, you just have a job. It's really important that you start to delegate some of the tasks inside of your business so that you can get out of the weeds and the mundane and start to focus on the high level tasks that will make you the most amount of money. And building a team will allow you to really build something that is going to run on autopilot so you can actually focus on the marketing, on the sales, and working with your clients to get the best results possible. So whenever you're actually looking at your daily schedule, there's probably a lot of things that you're doing right now that's not very conducive to growth for your business. You might be actually responding to a lot of emails, you might be connecting different automations, you might be onboarding clients and adding them into your different systems. These are all things that don't require a lot of brain power that you can't actually delegate for really cheap. And I recommend actually outsourcing a lot of the work in your business to people that are actually in third world countries because this will allow you to actually delegate a lot of the work for very cheap so that now again, you can buy back your time. And if you're able to delegate a certain task for very cheap, this is going to save you a lot of time and thus allow you to get your time back to focus on these high level tasks inside your business. And so whenever I hired my very first employee, she was my virtual assistant and I was able to hire her for less than $5 an hour. So all the tasks that I basically provided for her were tasks that I was previously doing that I then delegated. And if it seems like maybe you're not actually in the position just yet to start to delegate tasks in your business and you don't really think it's worth it, well, if you could hire someone for $5 an hour to do this work, you're basically paying yourself $5 an hour. And if you're in business, I hope that you're striving to make a lot more than that. So this is basically the mind frame that I want you to have here when it comes to actually hiring new employees. If you're able to pay yourself higher than what the cost of these tasks are, then you should try to delegate as much as possible. So I'm gonna show you in this video exactly where to find these cheap virtual assistants, how do you actually manage them, and what type of tasks could you be providing for them as well. So let's dive in. So what I would recommend when it comes to actually hiring a virtual assistant is going to onlinejobs.ph. So this is a really great website because it allows you to connect with people that live in the Philippines. And so they're actually a very hardworking culture. They are gonna be very appreciative to working with you even for these perceived lower rates because it's such a cheap quality of life over there with the dollar compared to what we have over here because the dollar is so much stronger compared to their currency. So every dollar you send over there goes a lot further. And so they actually are only making about $300 per month on average when it comes to income over there. So if they're able to make $300 of income with you, they're already making great money. And there's an advantage here where they can work from home, remote, right? Sometimes they can actually do their tasks with flexible hours. So they're actually very appreciative of working with American companies so they can actually make this good income while working remote from home. So it's a lot of pros for them to actually want to do this. And you can connect with these people through onlinejobs.ph. So it's my favorite website right here. The actual subscription costs about $80 a month. If you wanna have the premium version, you can also just post for free. I recommend just getting the premium one because you'll be able to get more applicants and just go so much faster. So here are some of the roles that we recently hired for. So we can see that I was hiring for a short form editor, long form editor, and now we're hiring someone for thumbnails. But this is where I went when I came to hire my first employee, which was my virtual assistant. So I made a job post basically talking about my company, what I'm looking for, the roles and responsibilities, what the pay would be like, and then I got a lot of applicants. So we can see that, you know, we posted this one five days ago. We already got 24 applicants. I already looked through everything and we have a couple of great candidates for this. So I recommend going onto this website to actually find the best candidates that would want to work with you. Obviously, you're going to have a lot of people that aren't that qualified. So one tip I'll give you is that I usually drop a keyword inside of the application page. And whenever they submit an application, they have to mention that keyword because some people might just be spam applying. And so if you require them to drop that keyword in their application, then you already know that they at least read the post. 
And then you want to also ask them for a resume. So there's a couple of different things you basically want to have at the very beginning to make sure they're at least putting in the effort to apply with you. But then the next step is actually conducting the interviews, making sure that they're actually qualified, that you even resonate and vibe with them. To be honest, I don't want to work with someone that I don't actually want to work with. The whole purpose of being a business owner is that you can basically build your own team. So make sure you resonate with them. They have good experience. If you don't have the best experience, you can still help build them up. But I do like to have someone that has worked in their respective position before just so that I to start from ground zero. But you can go here to find really great employees that will work for you. They're going to be very hardworking. You can pay them. For a virtual assistant, I'd probably start somewhere around 4 or $5 an hour. So again, every task you can delegate to this to this virtual assistant is all tasks that you're basically paying yourself four or five dollars an hour. So you're able to buy back time so much cheaper and this could be time that you spend inside your business or just living your life, right? So really, really big thing to think about. So what kind of tasks can you actually provide for this virtual assistant? All right, so here are a couple different ideas of what my virtual assistant is currently working on at the moment. So for example, we have a couple different clients that are getting onboarded. So with this, I ask her to basically collect all their information. This is for the credit repair side of things, which we're running right now. So we need certain documents from our new clients to actually submit disputes. So I ask her to basically reach out to them to collect these documents. If we don't hear back from them, she follows up. She might text them, call them, send them an email. She has an SOP to follow, to know how to exactly communicate with them and in which cadence. And so she's able to basically do all that for me. So that's one of them. Once we do get the documents, she actually uploads them into their client portal, right? This is just a copy and paste type of task that I really don't need to be doing that she handles for me. We also have her obviously onboarding some other clients as well. And then we have the YouTubes. So she actually sends YouTubes to all the different platforms as well. So I'll record it and post it on YouTube and then she sends it off to all the different platforms for me. So we're reposting on LinkedIn, on Twitter, on Facebook, Facebook groups. And she's also adding it to our free course as well. So she's able to send this post and spread it as far as possible so we can get even more views and really try to connect with people as much as possible. So that's a great task that, again, doesn't take that much time. Very simple. It's just a little tedious and I don't want to do it myself. And then as part of the credit repair process, we actually get a client number for our clients so that we can actually contact the credit bureaus for them and do the follow up. Once we're done with the client, we basically delete the number. So she has the task of actually calling our provider, which is Grasshopper that we use for client numbers. So she calls them, she cancels the number, and she handles all that for me. So here are basically a couple of different tasks that she helps me with when it comes to backend systems, working with clients, follow up. As we can see, there's a couple of clients that have been really slow to provide us with the document. She's been following up with them for over a month now. So this is something that I don't want to be dealing with, right? So she follows up with me and then some of the back end and also the repurposing of content, which has been really helpful as well. And then she also helps me post content, which is honestly such a huge game changer. So we have a whole board within Monday that looks something like this. And she's able to track all of our different posts across all the different platforms and keep track of everything. So I don't post any of my content anymore. I just record it. And then once I record it, we have zaps connected to backend systems that send it to my video editor. Once we have the edits completed, I check them. Once I approve it, then my assistant takes care of everything from there. And so she will post it to all these different platforms right here. So she's posting it on Instagram, Facebook page, YouTube, Facebook group, TikTok, LinkedIn. I mean, it could be easier for me, right? So things that are very, very simple to do. All I have to do is just grab the video, maybe a thumbnail if it's there, add a caption. So I actually have a, an automation with Zapier through ChatGPT that basically creates a caption for me. So it's a little bit more of an advanced strategy, but she automatically gets the caption. She just has to copy and paste it over and that's it. So a really great thing to use right here. So again, I'm buying my time back. Every single time that I provide a new task for her, 
this is one less task that I have to do and that much more time I'm getting back. So already just the task I've shown you so far, I've probably easily gotten back probably 10 hours a week, which is huge, right? So if you're working 40 hours a week, like a typical nine to five, well, you just got back 25% of your time, which is awesome. So that's something else that she helps me with. And then something else that's also huge is that as you're growing your team, as you're hiring more employees, you're going to be having to post more job posts, conduct more interviews. That's a very tedious process. So obviously you have to do this for your assistant, but she helps me now with all future hires. So I've created a whole board right here in which she helps me with hiring now. So right now we're hiring for the video editors. And so I have this entire board that basically helps her keep track of our candidates who we're hiring right now. And so I don't know why it's glitching like this, but I created an entire process that basically helps her make the job posts exactly how I want it to look, what are the requirements, what will the tasks be for this new hire. And then she siphons through all the different applications that we have. And then she conducts the first interview to again, check the vibe, see if they actually have the experience we're looking for. They're not some creepy person in the, in the shadows. We actually wanna work with them. And then once she approves about three to five people, then I conduct the final interview and I give the check and we hire them. So I save so much time with this because when I was, for one, hiring an assistant, basically you get maybe 50 to 100 applications. After you go through all of that, I might conduct 20 interviews. So I only do the interviews for about 15 minutes to go through them pretty quickly, but that's about five hours of interviews. So again, I'm saving so much time by doing this. So this is something else that you could potentially have inside your, inside your company. So if you're a agency for content, this would be a huge game changer for you. Just have an assistant, create some kind of board like this. If you want, a training on this particular board right here. Drop a comment down below for, let's call it the Monday hiring board. Comment Monday hiring board down below if you want me to create a training on exactly what this is and how it works. If you want me to create a training on the content posting board, let me know as well. Create a comment down below for content posting on Monday. Okay, so then I can create some more trainings based on what you're actually looking for. But that's the different tasks I provide for my virtual assistant. She saves me so much time every single week. This is time that I get back to then create this type of content, hop on sales calls, work with my clients, things that she couldn't do for me, but that makes such a huge impact in my business. And honestly, I'm able to also go to the beach, relax, enjoy. I'm not stressing about having to make sure I reposted all the YouTubes or anything. She's got it for me, which is awesome. And so some people do get a little stressed out, you know, this person's far away, how do I even manage them? So one tool I'd recommend is using this right here. So this is called Screenshot Monitor. I've been using this for years now. It works great just because you can basically track their hours. So I pay her on an hourly rate, but she's able to basically clock in and out on her own. So I do have them all clocking at the same time, but whenever they're done with their task for the day, they can clock out basically whenever they want. So, or whenever they're done. So they can track their hours through this software. I can also see how productive they are, which is basically my favorite part of this tool. So I'll see a percentage based on how often they move their mouse, how often they're typing. So I get a percentage out of a hundred. So usually if they're over 80%, they should be pretty productive and that's a good number for me. If they're below, I might bring it up. And just because I don't wanna be pa paying for hours that are not actually being worked basically. So that's why I do that. And then you can get the full report. So I pay them bi-weekly and so I can just go into here really quick, make sure that the efficiency is good. I might click through the screenshots really fast to see if they're not just watching YouTube or what have you. And based on the hours that we have. I just pay them through WISE and we have all that. So I recommend WISE. WISE is a really great payment software. They allow you to pay from an American account over to a Philippines account. So they make it very, very easy for you. But that's basically it right there. I recommend hiring a virtual assistant so you can start to buy back your time as soon as possible. This will make such a huge impact for you. If you're not able to afford this just yet, I'd recommend checking out all my other videos 
because they go over how to qualify for 0% business funding. This will allow you to basically unlock resources that you can then put into your business to scale your ads, get in front of more clients, make more money. It allows you to hire a team. So if you're not currently at the level right now that you're able to hire a team, well, basically getting funding allows you to operate the next level before you're there yet. But now that you're at the next level, you can basically catch up revenue wise and then you can pay back the loan. So if you're basically at less than 5K a month, you could potentially get access to funding, ramp up your ad spend, hire a team, focus on your marketing, focus on the sales, and now you're going so much faster. So if you wanna check that out, I have a lot of different videos here inside of my YouTube channel that will guide you through this entire process. If you want to get a little bit more in depth, if you want some support for this, we also have an entire coaching program that's going to guide you exactly on the entire process of repairing your personal credit, optimizing your LLC to make sure you're really fundable when it comes to the banks, and then we also guide you through the entire application process A to Z to make sure you get good funding results. That's why I run this business right now. This is the exact same model that I used when I was just getting started. I didn't have a lot of money and I wanted to actually grow and take massive action, so I got some funding and I was able to do just that. So. That's basically it for the video though. Hopefully this helps you out. If you do like this video, drop a like down below. If you have any questions about any aspects of this video or if you actually want me to create more videos like this that go more in depth inside my business, then just drop a comment down below because I really want to provide the most value that speaks to you. But overall, thanks for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe so you can learn more about funding and growing your business and I'll see you soon.